So with Bungie dropping a new Vidoc on Shadowkeep and also learning much more from it, I thought I'd drag myself away from Borderlands to get a video on showcasing the most important parts from this Vidoc as well as the things you may have missed. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. If you enjoy it, leaving a like it truly helps me out and subscribe if you want more Daily Destiny 2 videos. Okay, so the entire Vidoc, if you do want to check it out, can be found linked within the video description. Today I nitpick the things I feel you would want to know, so let's get into it. Okay, so they firstly go on to talk about the future and how they want Destiny 2 to offer a deeper player experience, showcasing some great new things such as Armor 2.0, new weapons, Aerith Mine crafting and much more. Check it out. Build crafting choices, deeper RPG chase, like more team play. One of the first things we set out to do with Shadowkeep was deepen the character sheet. He was implementing some of the feedback he got from Sheet. That led to all the changes that we made to Armor. Armor 2.0 is really all about making every slot on your character sheet have an impact. Stats are back, there's like more stats than ever. If you overhaul the mod economy, there's gonna be a bunch of you know mods that you can get for your finishers. There's a whole new crop of weapons that are coming out. There's new seasonal weapons to earn. There's the new Shadow Keep, Astro Shaman weapons. It's kind of like old school, magic y, like imbued with dark power sort of feel to it. You're fending for yourself. Eris is not trying to protect you. So the weapons just like, they're guiding you through the experience and they're telling you when the nightmares are around. We actually have it set up that when you're near the nightmares, like they have a bit of this, like, almost like you can see through them or there's some glowing inside. This is one of the weapons that Victor is making. It's a rocket launcher, fires out seeker projectiles, so should be fun. You're gonna learn a bunch of cool stuff about Eris and this nightmare problem around the solar system, but you're gonna build a bunch of cool rewards. And then, you know, if you don't get rolls that you like, you're gonna go back to the rune table and you're gonna make more. And that's part of being a Shadowkeep player. It's building your character your way. Okay, so let's quickly go back over a few things mentioned and seen here. What is this weapon? It looks super unique. Possibly a new exotic, something that's coming with Shadowkeep, something for the future, a concept image. We don't know, but we will see, but it looks epic either way. In the background here, are we seeing a new fawn ornament? I mean, it's hard to make out because of the quality isn't the best, but it looks pretty cool. Same image, we see a fallen weapon there in the distance. This most probably will be a enemy weapon model, but we can always dream of a new fallen themed exotic coming too. We also, for the first time, get a proper look at the bug weapon icon. Looking great. Also notice how amazing looking that ghost shell is too. Absolutely loving that. Next up we see this new set of weapons. Now no doubt some will be reskins, but the colour scheme here is pretty damn cool. Luke Smith then tells us about the Astro Shell Mini weapons, which we have seen a lot of from previous trailers. Good to put a name to them. I also like the fact we see weapon models being worked on, as well as the inspirations for design. Same with the Death Bringer Exotic. We then see within Eris Mon's inventory as she has bounties as well as new materials. Note that both are used for her crafting of gear feature. Okay, so let's move further into the Vidoc and they go on to talk about the future and seasons. This honestly was my favourite part of the Vidoc as it shows a proper bungee, a proper studio working as a team to change what we've always referred Destiny to as to actually making that a reality. Try to like separate that like sort of ramp up cinematic like story climax beat moment from the each year we have an expansion set that comes out like Shadowkeep and we're gonna have four follow-on seasons. And the expansions themselves are, are like meant to be an anchor that is gonna set that arc in a place. That growth, evolution, change, that's the stuff that manifests in the seasons. So we evolve the season pass. One of the biggest changes from the seasonal model you'll see from the annual pass is that we're focusing a lot more on how the seasons actually connect to one another. We want to make sure we're actually threading a narrative that players can follow, starting in Shadowkeep. We're going to start telling one continuous story. You want it to be meaningful. You want to understand, like, why was I sent there? 
we're actually trying to set up this concept of the season being something that occurs and you want to be there and you want to experience it. The players are moving the world forward. They're making an impact. They're leaving that resonance in the world itself. How can Guardians actually come together and do something that unlocks rewards, pursuits, new experiences for everyone? We want a universe that's dynamic and changing. It's a universe where you can have memories. You can say things like, I was there when. So yeah, looking good for real. Then next, go on to talk about more ways to play, discussing the artifact, a new dungeon, nightfall new mods, and PvP people. Check it out. Every season they log into Destiny, there's a new way to play the game. Season rank, the artifact, the bonus power that comes with the artifact, player elective difficulty. These are all systems that are designed to make the game more compelling as a character building game. What we wanted to provide with the artifact was an infinite power grind for the players. The seasonal artifact is going to give you the tools that you need to defeat champions, our new hardest enemies in the new Nightfall modes. We're calling it Nightfall the Ordeal, so the players can choose how hard they want their difficulty to be. The further up you move in difficulty, the more likely you are to get the kind of rewards that you're looking for. The end game now is about powering up your artifact to get more powerful beyond your gear so you get to the hardest challenges. The hardest level of the nightfall or you're trying to hit the hardest raid challenge or the dungeon. The dungeon that we're shipping in Shadowkeep's time frame is uh, deep within the moon. You fight your way down into like the depths of this chasm and there's all kinds of traps on the way. This is an opportunity for people that want the raid experience in terms of the, the mystery of the activity, but with Fire Teams 3. Charging you up, Lars, get in there! What? <laughs> We're thinking a lot about how we lay the foundations for a, a healthier PvP game. We're really committed starting in year three to have a renewed focus all through the year on PvP. That's going to be bringing back Destiny 1 maps. It's going to be bringing elimination into Crucible Labs. We're doing this really cool thing where we have four different iterations. Try them out week to week on the new maps and get feedback. We want seasons to be relevant for everyone. We want it to feel like everybody has something new to do and feel like they're all doing it together. We're here to build something that lives. Man, this is getting me super hyped. Okay, so going back, how epic does this linear fusion look? Very interested to see what this actually is and where it drops. We then see the Nightfall ordeal. This being uh, one of the hardest challenges for high level artifact chasers. Notice the rewards too. Exotic gear, common, as well as an enhancement prism. These prisms we do know and have seen are sold or traded for with the gunsmith within his new inventory, so maybe you can swap them with him for a certain material or reward, we will see. Check this beast out people, now I'm not sure who this is, it kinda looks lava rocky infused. I'm sure the law folks out there will know exactly who this is, but it looks amazing for sure. Also look at this hunter helmet, like what, damn that is amazing. We also see more of the Monte Carlo exotic guys. Okay, so let's get back into it. A single evolving world. Check it out. Season of the Undying is when the Vex start invading from the Black Garden. And when they start invading the moon, you get to help take them out. Over the course of that three month period, you're going to be getting more powerful, stronger, and then eventually you're gonna stop that invasion. The story that we're telling is about the impact that the Vex can have on the whole solar system if we leave them unchecked. It's really going to kick that Act 1 of Year 3 off. And then Season 8 gets going with a raid, Vex offensive, we've got nightmare hunts, exotic quests, we'll explore the moon, new strikes, new PvP maps. There's just so much going on, no matter what kind of player you are. 
Season eight is the catalyst. Season nine is really where things start to build. And then season 10 is where things start to get pretty intense. And then season 11, everything is gonna come together and you're gonna wanna be there to see it happen. It's gonna be like no other time in Destiny. Single Evolving World is one of the biggest changes that we're gonna make over time to Destiny. Getting to that single evolving world is asking us to kind of unlearn a bunch of the things that we've learned. Hopefully we think we've made the right calls, and if the answer is no, like the good news is we're in full control to change it. We can keep evolving the game. We're turning it into a game that we're all proud to be working on. We have a vision, we have a roadmap, we have a, a place we want to take Destiny, and Shadow Keep and Seasonally Dying are just the first steps. It's a foundation. This is like the bedrock that we're going to build a lot of other stuff on top of. Forsaken broke a bunch of the bones that we had set, you know, with Destiny 2. What we've been able to do this year is we set them. Are we done? No. Not even close. So how can you not be hyped by that? Okay, so going back over a few points here, we see a new roadmap. Well, it's the same one with one change. The exotic quest for the Definity Trace Rifle has been changed to an exotic quest for the Xenophage. And we see the bug weapon there. So I'm guessing we now know its name, Epic. We then get another look at this mysterious rocket launcher I covered the other day. At first I thought this was the Deathbringer but upon closer inspection we know it definitely isn't. But what is this? Armor on the Hunter as well also looks incredible by the way. I also love this instance of new light and us welcoming new guardians into the game. And then we see this amazing looking room which looks to have some kind of module at the end. Where is this place? Possibly the new dungeon? We will see. And then guys, we get another look at this beast, whoever this is. And guys, that is it. If I've missed anything, let me know down below within that comment section. Also, tell me what you think the future of Destiny holds. And if you say reskins, I'm going to cry. But yes, I am super excited for Shadowkeep. And the more we learn about it, the more hyped I get. Two weeks, people, and it will be here. But on that note, we have come to the end of the video. Guys, if you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want more Destiny videos, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video I upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.